All right, welcome back to the Oasis podcast and to James Hargreaves' guitar YouTube channel or, or wherever else this is going to turn up. And I'm joined today, I'm James from the Oasis podcast, and I'm joined today by James Hargreaves. How, how are you doing, James? I'm very well, sir. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. This is going to be good fun. So uh, today we're going to be doing a, a tier maker, as people can see. We're going to be doing a tier list of every Oasis single. Now, it's going to be good fun. Now, it's going to be a little bit different. What, what, talk to me about what, what, how you would like to play this, James. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of a, I like going behind the scenes. I like listening to all the really weird, rare tracks, including the remixes. So I'm going to kind of argue the toss for ranking different singles as a whole package. So based on all four or three or two songs that are included, I'm going to, argue the toss and there are some that i do consider biblical and there are some that i do consider shite <laughs> and uh, i don't not that i want the oasis podcast mob at my door waving pitchforks but uh, <laughs> not no, no, for no. me it's never based on the lead single for me it's always based on the b-sides because i generally own the album and i already know the track i buy the single for the b-sides so that's my approach yeah, absolutely. And and so, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about the A-sides and then you're going to talk about the B-sides. We might talk about the artwork as well a little bit and then we're mm. going to decide between us and it might come to virtual fisticuffs where it sits in our categories. And we've got biblical, mad for it, pretty good, could be better or shiite. So, um, yeah, should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to start off with, and I'd just like to point out, I'm in control of the mouse, so uh, my... <laughs> So my you have veto. Goes. You have the power. <laughs> I've got the power. All around the world. Um, well, in terms of the the song itself, as I say, I, I absolutely love it. I know what you mean about um, the song versus the B sides because by the time this came out, you know, we'd had the album for months, so we already knew the yeah. song. It wasn't like an amazing thing to get this this particular song. I absolutely think it deserved to be a single it was such a special song. It was such a one-off bizarre thing to do this nine minute version. Um, you know, that, that to, to put that as a single, it was almost just like a, a just ridiculous bold thing to do. So I think for that, it has to go either in biblical or mad for it for me. Maybe it's not quite up there in terms of, as in terms of an idea and, and the, just the, the balls. Yeah, whatever. We're putting this out as a single, nine minutes of madness. Oh, yeah. It almost feels like it deserves biblical, but it's not quite in the upper echelons of those great Oasis songs. So I'm going to say mad for it personally, based on the yeah. single. I think I'm, I'm, I'm largely with you on that one because all around the world, like you said, it is just pure swagger. It's like, the, here's hey jude his his hey jude take two you know it's just mm. massively confident but for me you have to put it against other oasis singles that's got to stand up against wonder wall you know and the and the master plan as a b-side you know what i'm saying yeah. so if you compare all around the world with fame flashbacks and my favorite b-side on that which is the street fighting man cover which is better than the stones if you ask me that is better than the Stones version. So Street Fighting Man was the highlight for me. But if you compare it to other bands at the time, it's biblical. But if you compare it to the best of Oasis, I'm going to I'm gonna go with you on that one and say mad for it. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, I'm, absolutely. I love flashbacks. I love the fame. And I completely agree. I'm, I think Street Fighting Man is better than the Stones version. I can't believe it when people don't pick that out as like one of the best Oasis songs and one of the best covers. I think it's brilliant. Liam's voice is amazing. The Stones version is quite acoustic -y, you know what I mean? And this is just rocks the Oasis version. So yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to go on biblical now, but I agree. I think we'll, <laughs> I think we'll stick with Mad for it. Um, and yeah. then the artwork as well. I think it's a nice cover. It's a Brian Cannon um, one. It's it's cool. It, it does what it needs to do. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It's, that's one of my le less favourite covers. It's like. Um, he was trying to get meaning in there, but the, the colours aren't quite right for the song. I, I think the, um, I don't know if you've seen the American promo cover that's got like a, a strange UFO on it. That, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that to me, they got the colours and stuff right on the on the song, on that right, particular yeah. cover. That one, cover-wise, not so sure. 
Okay, fair enough. All right, so it's going to sit in mad for it then. Right, okay. cigarettes and alcohol. This is a really tough one. <laughs> and I know the B-sides are great as well, so it'll be good fun to talk about that. But mm -hmm. I think... I think this has to go into biblical. I, I think as a as a rock and roll song, I don't think you can get much better than it as a statement of intent for a, a relatively new band coming out. Um, I just think it's amazing. Like it was one of the most powerful statements Oasis made, ripping off T Rex in that just don't don't care attitude. Like the lyrics, you know, Liam's aggravation and all that sort of stuff. Liam's voice is incredible. <laughs> so it's a biblical for me. Yeah, well, I've got a. That's my that's my first biblical. I did them. I did them in a chronological order. Oh, okay. And, uh, for me, cigarettes and alcohol was the first time they hit the magic, whatever that is. So every single track is solid gold. The, the normally I'm a bit wary of a live track because usually it's just the same as the studio version with a crowd in the background, pretty yeah. much. Um, but. I remember the first time I heard their version of I Am The Walrus. And again, I was like, that is better than the Magical Mystery Tour version. <laughs> and I, that's, that's borderline heresy, I know. But uh, I love it. It's that, that is, for me, the definitive I Am The Walrus. Listen up. What a tune. What a tune to be a B-side. With, with Fade Away, um, I feel like that one, it's a great song. I feel like the recording they got of it was so raw that it didn't quite get to shine, but they've re-recorded it in a million different ways. They re-recorded it on Help. Yeah. Uh, they re-recorded it on uh, Dreams We Have As Children, which is the song it's named for. You know, uh, that was just Noel, that one, wasn't it? Mm. But um, yeah, I'm with you actually, biblical all the way. It's amazing, isn't it? And a great cover shot as well. And what I love mm. about the artwork there is it's, you know, it's not just the band. There's like random people in there. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> manager, booze. Yeah, I know. And I love the uh, the story. You know, Brian Cannon's told the story on the podcast before about how you know they they like rented the hotel for the previous night as well, just to like prepare. How, how, <laughs> why do you need to prepare for just a picture in a <laughs> pissed up in a hotel room? <laughs> but I love they it. I love a twenty four hour start on the booze. I know, amazing. I love that. Um, <laughs> this is a song you know a little bit about. Um, just, just yeah. Are you sick of it? Yeah, track. actually, don't look back in anger. Are you sick of talking about this song? I'm not, but do you know what? Every time I do anything, anything, even remotely connected to this song now, the first hundred comments are all, you're obsessed with this song, man. <laughs> I, do you know what? I've got a video I want to do, and I've just decided I'll shelve that for six months. I'll shelve it. Because the first hundred comments minimum will all be calling me an obsessive about this song. So <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, look, I, I don't think it's great. I'm going to put it in shy. Okay, no, of course not. This is biblical. This is one that. This is one yeah. of the finest pieces of music ever recorded. Like, let alone Oasis, any mm. band ever. This straight away goes straight in there. Like, I don't know if it was with you or someone else we were talking about recently. Like hearing it acoustically on simon mayo on the radio and just being like yeah wow, yeah that is something else this is yeah this is just a, a different level of songwriting so uh, you know yeah. th what more can you say about it it's just so brilliantly structured all the way through if you break it down like mathematically as a if you had to break down a perfect song i think this is a perfect song so it yeah. goes straight into biblical and i'm gonna put it because we can do this that's put the only thing I was going to say. That's the yeah. only thing I was going to say. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, every track, every track on this, uh, any other band would give their left leg for any track off this to be their lead single. Come on, feel the noise. Amazing. Underneath the sky is one of my favourite B sides. What a tune! Outstanding. Sure. Step out, and that was 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 step out was originally meant to be on uh, definitely maybe wasn't it? Well, it was originally going to be on Morning Glory, and then it got oh. it was on the first pressings. Yes, it's on the if you've got an initial pressing um, with Step Out on it, then you, it's probably worth a few quid. But they binned yeah. it at the last minute because of the um, the fact it's a massive rip off of Uptight by Stevie Wonder, <laughs> so they yeah. they ditched it at the last minute. But yeah, it was supposed to be on there, which would have been interesting because then it would have been two Noel lead vocals on the same album, which would have been you know a strange choice for them because. You know, going, you know, Liam being the main singer, 
you know, it's always been like, okay, well, Noel does this one, you know, Noel does Don't Look Like an Angus. So to have two would have been an interesting choice, but yeah, um, I, oh God, I love all those B-sides. Uh, they're all Absolutely. brilliant, yeah. I'm, I'm still holding out hope that one day they're going to release the version with the Liam vocal. I don't know if you've seen that clip. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, um, my it's life, amazing. that is so cool. Well, it's, it's you know what, this is a, uh, it's an annoying one because Tim Abbott, who it was basically a live show that Tim Abbott and uh, Ian Robertson did. And I've, I've been talking to Tim Abbott for ages about coming on, but it's always one of those, oh, I'd rather do it in person. And, you know, it just hasn't happened. But they did this live event and they said, like, cameras off, cameras off. Everyone phones away, phones away. And someone got that, you know, someone got that that footage yeah. um, and, uh, and put it up. And as soon as it was up, you know, boom, that's it and uh you know that's it like but to be fair it was like it was frustrating because obviously tim was the main person like who who did all the filming that was then made up supersonic so mm -hmm. um, most of that stuff is tim's and there has been talk of him doing something like another film or, or something with his footage but um yeah and that is like the holy grail and you'd think if it wasn't the fact that noel gallagher is like the main guy with ignition management you know who so there's a i think there's a general favoring of noel in the oasis you know makeup now in the oasis management you'd mm. have to think that would be a, a just a perfect option you know to have put out like even when last year when it was the morning glory anniversary you just think that would be so perfect to put out the album again but with the liam sung step out it would have been amazing but didn't happen singing, singing it right in his vocal prime as well oh absolutely yeah absolutely it's very very special but well, uh, no, i'm with you biblical and more biblical than cigarettes and alcohol I'm yes. with you on that. <laughs> all right this... that much over this are we no 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 so far so good um this is going to be a tricky one though uh no b-sides to discuss because this is the first this is you know a song that came out less than a year ago this is don't stop mm. um so for people that don't follow it this closely, this was like a, a little demo that basically Noel Gallagher had found. Um, most of us Oasis nerds knew it because it had like versions of it, him doing it, sound check and stuff had been released previously, had been leaked. So we we didn't know about it. Um, I I assumed at some point it would it would show up as a Noel Gallagher song, like a lot of them, like Revolution Song and um, uh, other other songs that he's demoed with. Um, Oasis or uh, at Soundchecks have ended up coming out as a Noel song um, so I assumed it was going to be that but no Oasis logo officially this is an Oasis song um, yeah. I'm going to say it could be better I think it's it's good it's a, a lovely demo um, yeah. it's a good song but I'll be honest after I listened to it a few times when it came out I've not ever really felt the urge to stick it on again like if it comes yeah. on shuffle I'll listen to it if I'm listening A to Z, I'll listen to it. But mm. other than that, it's not like a go-to tune for me. So I would say could be better. Yeah, that's what I've got written down, actually. Yeah, I mean, for me, from a musical perspective, I listened to it and I was like, it's cool, but you can tell it's it's notes. It, he, he just sort of, this is an idea, stick it down, I'll finish it later, and kind of never did. It, mm. It's um, as a songwriter as well. This this is notes. This isn't a, a finished article. So right. yeah, I mean, being released as a single when it's not fleshed out, you know, and it's it's just no with an acoustic guitar. I would say yeah, could be better. Fine, cool, okay. <laughs> oh God, this is hard, right? Do you know what I mean? Wow, I mean, this in terms of a, you know, I know you're going to talk about the B sides, but I'm quite jealous. Mm. The, you know, I mean, how do you <laughs> as an EP? <laughs> as an ep that is such a special ep i mean it goes the the song itself do you know what i mean was probably my, one of my most amazing moments i remember it to this day hearing on the radio and them saying we're going to be playing the, the oasis single next and just mm. <gasps> like you know just sort of you know n you know forget getting exam results or forget any, you know anything like that waiting for a pregnancy mm. test result what chuck all that <laughs> <laughs> this was the most anticipation oh god get the camp you know get the cassette was this tape the, national, the national debut was this this was the radio when they first played it on radio one because i think it I had was been leaked and yeah. so they were like right we're playing it and uh oh i couldn't and i was just so amazed and 
you know, just the, the, the boldness of it. And it still keeps going and going. And now it's a guitar solo. And now it's another. It's like this one's got like three choruses. You know, I was just amazed by it. Um, I still think it's an incredible piece of work. Um, I think I don't think it's got like the emotional power of uh, of a Don't Look Back in Anger. It hasn't got the rawness of cigarettes and alcohol. So it's somewhere I would just probably put it there. I probably it's a tough one against Sigs and Alk. Um, but let's talk yeah. about the B sides then. At the moment I'm I'm there, but let's see what we took where we get to with the B sides. Yeah, so really from the point of come on, feel the noise onwards for for a little while, we've got constant covers that are better than the originals. And so Heroes, I, I listened to that and I, I was absolutely gobsmacked. And I was like, that David Bowie must be incredible. And I listened to it and it sounded like a, you know, a geriatric man having an asthma attack. I was like, what is this? Noel's version and this, and I love David Bowie, I really do. But his, his version cannot stand up next to the Oasis version. So Heroes, I mean, that's a, you know, driving at 70 miles an hour on a summer's day with all the windows down song. That is a tune. Um, Angel Child, absolutely love it. T t for me, really, it's a shame that Noble hates Stay Young because I think it's a fantastic song. And I, that, I think most fans love that song as well. But f for me, the only, the only thing on this whole EP where I would be like, ah, was maybe the lyrics in the odd place on do you know what i mean got you okay that's the only thing so i think yeah i mean i do think it's biblical i think that this is a biblical single because the the, the b sides are so good they're mm -hmm. so absolutely top notch um and the so the only question mark was some of the lyrics on the title track but the title track was brilliant i was there in north yorkshire where i still am now listening to the radio um, i remember the moment my mum and dad's old big uh, black stereo with a CD player and a vinyl thing on top, and just me and my brother sat there like this, waiting for the. Yeah, I think everyone our age around the entire country were oh, doing the same thing. Absolutely. Um, I have to pick up on heroes. I, I per, I, I don't agree on that. I think that the okay. heroes version. I um, I know what you mean because I had a similar experience with. The, I heard I'm the Walrus by Oasis first before I heard the Beatles version. Yeah. And when I heard the Beatles version, I was like, what the hell is this? There's no guitars. Like, it's just mm. this, like, weird strings. And, like, I just couldn't yeah. get my head around it. So I always did prefer the Oasis version of Walrus. But Heroes, I think, um, I think a lot of what makes Heroes so great is, is the nuance and stuff in the way that Bowie delivers it. And I think Noel mm. just, maybe if Liam had sung it, um, then, then I could see it. But I think the way Noel sings it, he just, like, shouts it. And... I don't think he get he captures the same like you know emotion that Bowie gets on it. So so I would yeah I, I would disagree on that front. Um, but yeah, I mean obviously Stay Young's you know one of my favorite Oasis songs, maybe my favorite. It's become the Oasis podcast anthem. So um, mm. yeah, so so yeah. So where are we where are we going to go then? Are we going above I'm, I'm with... Sigs and Alk? Do you think? No, I think you're right there. I mean, c cigarettes and alcohol's got, you know, listen up, fade away, walrus. I think that's probably about right. Yeah, cool. Good. Here's an interesting one. All right, Falling Down. <laughs> the the last Oasis single in there, uh, it, while they were Oasis, obviously before this, like, you know, Don't Stop and stuff. But um, I really, really like the song Falling Down. I think it's super cool. I think it's one of those great songs on Dig Out Your Soul near the start of the record. You know, I think it's just so great. I think the record falls off a bit near the end. But I think this is a beautiful song. We live and die in dream. You know, I think it's great. Um, mm. So I would probably, obviously it's not in the biblical category. I'd be tempted to put it in the lower end of Mad For It rather than Pretty Good. Uh, I would probably be putting it in, in the lower end of Mad for it rather than pretty good. Right. Well, this one is a could be better for me. Oh, okay. Um, it is because I wasn't a huge fan of the actual original song. Um, it felt unfinished. <coughs> to, for, for me, there, there was parts of bits and bobs on Dig Out Your Soul and then onwards where Noel would sometimes put out a song that felt like he hadn't finished it. And 
on the, so on the B sides, this is the only song that actually has a B side from all the singles on uh, on on Dig Out Your Soul, and it's it's quite an interesting one that the um, those swollen hand blues, yeah, which is to me that is quite psychedelic. It feels like it should sit on um, as a, almost as a secret track on Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. It's really kind of psychedelic and mad and very beatly, and, and it, it feels like it's been. Um, you feel like you're listening through to it through a haze almost. Yeah, um, it's weird and interesting, but the gib mix, I hated it. The, mm -hmm. So the, the falling down the gib mix, I hated it. The prodigy version, oh my life, it was terrible. Well, okay, this is this is me. I I I hate um, synthesized stuff. I hate you know drum machines and stuff like that. And when when you for me when you put it next to something like you know don't look back in anger where every b-side is an original composition yeah. that's solid gold and then you look at soil and hand blues it's very quirky it's, it's all right but it's very quirky and then the give mix eh. and yeah. the product version eh. so as a package for me it's very much could be better mm, okay but you're the podcast man so i'll leave it in your well i'll tell you what why don't we meet in the middle then and say pretty good because i i, I agree yeah i mean to be honest the remix is I don't really listen to them ever. So I've probably listened to them a handful of times in my life and just gone like, yeah, mm. fine, whatever. You know, the, no, tell a lie, the, the amorphous androgynous 23 minute remix. I've listened to a few <laughs> times because that's a good, good fun to put on. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the song itself is strong enough to, to put it uh, in pretty good personally. So um, I understand what you mean about the whole package. So let's, let's go pretty good then. Shall we you happy with that? Sure cool all right yeah but it's, it's funny with remixes because the the, re, the really big problem with remixes of oasis stuff specific to oasis is it's never as good as the original so mm. what's it there for yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's my thing with it yeah it's there because liam didn't turn up to the recording studio to do another <laughs> b-side you know so uh yeah cool all right well here we go this is go let it out uh -huh. this is a very very special um yeah once again another one it was always the most exciting was when they came back wasn't it like you were saying you know because then when when it was these other singles you always had that element of well i know the main song so it's then it is just about the b-sides whereas we go let it out and with do you know what i mean and the other ones will come on to there was that oh it's the new oasis song you know it's so exciting to hear that as well but yeah, Go That Out, I thought was a really, really great tune. Um, I don't think it's, um, I actually prefer, there was a demo version, excuse me, there's a demo version that's got the um, Austin Powers quote at the start, when he's like, um, what is it? Um, well, as long as the people are still having, you know, um, unprotected sex and taking drugs, the RB sounds as a pound. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> You know, I love that version, and I was <laughs> so it could have been better with that in there. So I think it's, I think it's a, a really good song. I think it's like, you know, it was them trying to be a bit different and trying to mix it up a little bit. Um, the whole like, is it any wonder why Prince and Kings part? I think is very cool. Um, hmm. I don't, th I think it's better than pretty good. Um, I would probably based on the song "Go It Out," I would put it in Mad for It, but not as good as All Around the World. Yeah, I'd agree on that. Um, I mean, the, the thing with Go Let It Out, the song, it was exciting. When they brought in that, that very beat to the Mellotron on the mm. Is mm. Any Wonder section, mm. yeah. that was, yeah, do, 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 mm. that kind of Lennon arpeggiating the chords. Mm. Um, but this had Let's All Make Believe. What a flipping song that is. That was, I mean, what a song. So all the singles, the three singles from standing on the shoulders of giants had at least one gem as a b-side i found it frustrating that it, it was one this was the sort of the end of the absolute golden age was yeah. with the beginning of this it was still good but um bonehead had gone griggsy had gone owen morris had gone and at this point onwards most of the not all but a lot of the b-sides from now on were just all noel yeah and um they never again did four songs per single never again after this and yeah. um, so that time where you would buy a single knowing you were getting four 
songs that any other band would die mm. to have written that had ended here but yeah. on this you definitely had one which was um i mean go let it out was great fun don't get me wrong but let's all make believe that was kind of the uh, the master plan of this era for me yeah. so i agree cigarettes yeah. in hell pretty good cigarettes yeah. in hell in hell's kind of fun but the big thing i noticed about that one was um they had this new very clean very sort of um clinical studio sound for the acoustic stuff so the rawness was gone a little bit um and i missed that but the song itself yeah pretty decent so so i would say yeah mad for it but not as mad for it as all around the world perfect all right i agree yeah once again let's all make believe i think is one of their greatest songs and you know when people say oh well they never really did much great after like the you know after morning glory or, or after be here now it's like well there's that you know that that's one of the ones i always always point to um all right what's this i'm out of time <laughs> liam gallagher uh i really like the song i really really do like it um now where are we going to put it it's is it as good as falling down is it as good as i, I think the song itself is like a, it's a gorgeous song and it really demonstrates where Liam was as a songwriter, really having, you know, having had sort of, you know, some good moments, but then a bit patchy, you know, and a bit weird. And, you know, when he tried to do things like Love Like a Bomb or Born a Different Cloud, whereas I think it's the first one that really was like, wow, that's a great song. You know, it's really, really impressive and showed yeah. where he could potentially go as a, as a songwriter himself. Um, obviously he's in the video by himself and stuff so it was very much like, okay this is Liam doing his thing mm. but where do we go so is it it's better than pretty good but then that's obviously there because of the b-side so I'm going to put it in low end of mad for it now and let's talk about the b-side shall we right well I'm going to be a troublemaker now because this one pissed me off when it came out because I already had the song I had yeah. the album so I'm out of time remix if I remember rightly, all they did was take out a few chords, take out any electric guitars, and it was mostly drum and bass with an acoustic that came in once or twice, and that was it. Yeah. And then Rock of the Lightning remix, which, as usual, was not a patch on the original. No. So this what this this really wound me up when this came out. I've got the CD, you know, uh, I bought it, um, and it made me angry. I was like, <laughs> where are the B-sides? I put this one down as shite. <laughs> because... <laughs> The song, I know the song's fantastic, but that song is part of Dig Out Your Soul. The, no B-sides, none. Two remixes that both sucked. So that, for me, the only redeeming feature is the artwork is cool. But yeah. the single wound me up so much because it didn't give me anything new. It gave me two tracks that wound me up. And so, All right, so, look, so let's think about it compared to the other stuff. So are we saying that the song I'm Out of Time, I think, is better than the song Don't Stop, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've basically then got two B-sides that are neutral. You know, it's better to have them than not have them, I suppose. Sure. And I, the song, is the song of I'm Out of Time better than Falling Down? They're quite close. But I think having mm -hmm. the Swollen Hand Blues versus the two remixes. So I think that then gives Falling Down the edge then, personally. Yep, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Happy with that? Yeah, cool. No problems. Good. All right. Now here's the famous keys. <laughs> this was oh. when I when I interviewed Simon Halfon about it, and I was like, "Yeah, what was what was the idea around that? The keys?" It's like, well, Noel just said, "Do you want to take a picture of my keys?" <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Was that it? That was all yeah, it that's was. It. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you think like uh, you all know, the, 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 the conspiracy theorists figuring out all the secret messages and it's just uh just do you want to take a picture of the back of my head <laughs> exactly you know? that was it uh was let there be love wonderful. so i i've never been a massive fan of let there be love <clears throat> i personally think it's like you know because it was a it was a demo for standing on the shoulder of giants that they didn't do obviously they had you know i think they had quite a few slow songs around then so it was held back from there Obviously, they didn't want to use it for even chemistry. And then they're like, mm, what should we? All right, bring that one out for, for Don't Believe the Truth. And I just think it's a bit like they're trying to do, oh, we need like a, 
a stop crying your heart out or or a you know a, a, a champagne supernova we need a big dramatic ballady type you know all things to all people master plan you know sort of magic yeah. epic song and it was like yeah that'll do um i like the fact it's liam and noel as a as a duet i think that's really nice whenever they sing a duet together i always really like but generally i'm pretty meh about it to be honest so it would probably sit in pretty good for me um just yeah. on the based on the song itself yeah i mean this was very much a could be better for me because um first of all rock and roll star if you listen to that liam's voice is just shot to pieces mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like a dog barking in a distant garden you know honestly his, his voice is in bits and it's, it's, it's not, not a good version yeah it's not his it's best not, period no honest oh, it, i'll be honest that's a shocking version of a uh, rock and roll star and sitting here in silence on my own you know it's 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 okay but they, they just nicked sexy sadie ding 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 they just nicked the sexy sadie line it's only wow, it's just like two minutes long i think let me just have a little yeah. check okay it, it's over it's over before you even think about it don't you yeah it, it, it's oh, let's have a look yeah it's one minute 57 seconds long yeah and um that the, the, noel went through this little period from the hindu times through to let there be love where there was kind of um he would put one song on as a b-side that was like it didn't have any energy you know but he'd, he'd sound a one of the songs he'd sound a little bit bored on like maybe mm -hmm. it kind of had this slightly depressing country vibe you know and um, from hindu times through to let there be love and um yeah i i'll be honest i i was not impressed with this one this this one's very much could be better for me mm. all right well where are we going to put it then so so we've got um i suppose the individual song itself where where would you rank that versus those two and then taking into account sitting here in silence um it, it, I, I, maybe i'll put it in the middle of the two of them because um at least there are b-sides you know yeah that's true so having sitting in here in silence would be better than the fact there's no b-sides at all and i'm out of time mm. but yeah it's not it's not there with the song itself yeah versus swollen heart blue similar i suppose isn't it one mm. good song and then one sort of slightly weird little b-side yeah i think mm. that's i think that's fair cool all right here we go then so this is the only um double a side that they did um she is love and little by little um so li little by little i i like and i think it's good i mean lyrically i don't like it really when um like master plan i like but um generally i prefer noel when he's being when he's not trying to write you know we the people fight for our existence we don't claim to be you know i think when it's like making big statements like that i always think it comes across a bit silly yeah. but so little by little has been ones like eh, yeah it's good you know but it's never really did it for me massively until actually seeing no live in the last few years and then bringing it back out and you see like the surge of the crowd playing it and gem there on guitar mm. it was like yeah it really sort of went up a notch for me um whereas she is love i think is is whimsical and and not great at all if if she is love was like a i don't know like a, a kook song i'd be like oh yeah skip that you know what i mean i think i give it a bit more credit because it's an oasis song but i don't yeah. think it's great at all and that line all i know is i'm in love with someone that loves me too or something it's like jesus mm. no what are you doing man so um yeah um That's based on the, based on those two tunes i'd be putting it in uh, probably could be better even maybe i don't know around there what what, what do you think that's really interesting so f for me um yeah with with she is love oasis never did love songs in the 90s really maybe you could maybe she's electric or maybe girl with the dirty shirt they tended not they tended to stay away from love songs really though. yeah um and they kind of in the in the noughties it was a good thing they got off drugs but they got off drugs and settled down and started having kids and noel did start writing a few more kind of sentimental love songs and stuff like that sure. and that, that is definitely one of them i quite like it though <laughs> i quite like that <laughs> song. um 
I, I think um, she is love. It's just it's just goofy and cute. But it just to me it sounds like um, it sounds like something McCartney would have done on the second disc of White Album. Yeah, yeah, I can somehow. hear that. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, and my generation, I bloody love. You know what? I've just realised that my generation's on this, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's got to move up. It's got to move yeah. up just based on my generation. Yeah. So I, for, I had this one mad for it um, because my generation is so good, and I really like um, She Is Love, but I know you hate it. <laughs> so um, for, for me, if it was going to be in Pretty Good, it would be the top one or the bottom one in Mad For It. Yeah. So I think, I think, uh, I think my generation moves it above Falling Down. To be honest. Yeah. Because would I stick on the Falling Down single? Yeah, possibly to listen to Falling Down, maybe to listen to um, Soul and Hand Blues. But yeah. actually, would I stick on the Shears Love Little? Yes, to listen to my generation. I'm more likely to listen to my generation than I am to any of the others. So, yeah, I think that's fair. And Liam did it live with um, a... Uh, what's, the, what's the? He did it with the singer from The Who. I'm just remembering that. on Rudy the yeah. He did yeah, it he on did. Uh, Teenage Cancer Trust, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, he, well, he definitely he did it on, on a reboot of TFI Friday as well, and uh, it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah I forgot about wicked. that. Actually, yeah. I forgot about that on the TFI Friday. Yeah, that was good. Um, any, any time in this era, any time in the two thousands onwards era, when there was a Liam B side, I was always like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this one, this was one of the best," you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Andy Bell has a good go at the, at the hardest bass solo in the history of the world. He gives it a go. He gives it a yeah. go. Yeah. Um, fuck. All right. Well, live forever. Um, mm. You know, I know it just literally got voted best of British, you know, number one British song of all time this weekend. Um, I don't think it, uh, to me, I don't think it's quite personally. I think it's great. It's hard now to think about it. Because when it came out, like we covered it in my band, we covered it and, and Slide Away and and it was a special song, you know, but over the years, I kind of don't really go to it anymore. Um, it's not one that I will go to listen to like a Let's Make Believe or, or a Stay Young or something, but I do appreciate it's a it's a very, very special song. Um, mm. So just based on Live Forever, and we'll talk about the B-sides, I'd be putting it. Mm, above do you know what i mean possibly above six and out personally i'd put it below six and out um but let's talk about the b-side shall we and see what you have to say yeah so um i love the b-sides on this the, there's there's only one little black mark which is a throwaway live track that's almost identical to the uh album track so we've got supersonic live it's a good version and noel does change up his guitar part a tiny bit for live. So it has that slight difference. Um, but the, the supersonic 94 is, yeah, it, it's pretty good, but it's almost identical to the yeah. album version. So slight black mark for that. Um, but it has up in the sky acoustic, which is ace. Yeah. Brilliant version of the song. Absolutely love it with, I think Noel is using a slide on a 12 string, which is normally a massive no, no, but he makes it work. <laughs> Dude, he's doing all that crazy drunken cowboy stuff you know um love that and uh, cloudburst is my literally my favorite song from this era except maybe for slide away it's right up there anyway is and if, if they hadn't basically just lifted the entire melody off standing here from the stone roses <laughs> that could that should that could have been a lead single but yeah. I, I, th I think it was kind of um it was a step out wasn't it they, they so totally just nicked someone else's song <laughs> <laughs> and made it their own that they couldn't quite get away with putting it front and center same with step out yeah um yeah so for me um it's either uh the the uh, above all around the world in mad for it or it would be below do you know what i mean in biblical because of the sort of the, the throwaway live track that, that's uh, just my feeling on that interesting okay all right i'm happy with that i'm happy with that because i'd probably yeah, I agree. I love Cloudburst. Cloudburst is is one of the Oasis songs. That's probably the one that really blew my head off because that was the whole, because I've told the story a hundred times before, but I was given a tape, you know, we definitely maybe on one side and the B-sides on the other side. And mm. it was getting to Cloudburst and just being like, 
this one is unbelievable and that and that being like this is a b-side that doesn't make sense you know <laughs> this is the better than any songs by these other bands so yeah so that was a really special one for me but um yeah it's tough isn't it because out of four songs four versus four then uh yeah i think you know what i mean might just might just take it yeah yeah interesting all right lord don't slow me down this is going to be a tricky one so this was a um you know just released like basically when the when the documentary film came out and i've always been um the the problem with this this will this song will always have an asterisk by it for me because of the fact um liam's done a version of it and we've heard liam's version of it and it's brilliant so what why have we got the Noel version of it that when you've got the Liam who sings it better I mean I love Noel singing on something like Don't Look Back in Anger or Talk Tonight or something I think Noel mm. is the right person to sing those songs but I'm tired and I'm sick you know that's Liam yeah. you need Liam singing yeah. it so yeah. it's like it's a great song and I like it a lot but why isn't Liam on it so that kind of always throws me about this version of the song so for that I'd put it in pretty good or, or maybe even could be better just because it annoys me about the fact that it's not liam yeah yeah so i mean uh, s similar thoughts really I, I i would say pretty good i'll be honest i'm not sure where amongst those i would put it i really do like the song but you're right why wasn't liam on it and um you, you get this this feel kind of that towards this this part of the career you can even see it in the kind of the cosmic artwork of uh uh, dig out your soul that noel was starting to move towards what he now does he was yeah. starting to put out feelers in that in that direction and he was the boss of the band wasn't he so it, mm. you look at it and go maybe he just pulled rank there mm. who knows um, but no i agree with you i agree with you on that yeah and then the the b-sides uh meaning of soul live and don't look back in anger live both from city and manchester stadium so Oh Fine. well, on the CD version, it was there was there was no B sides. It was just okay. On, what am I talking about then? Uh, what's that from then? Unless oh, I have a pro. Oh, that must be the digital download EP or something then. Maybe. Oh right, right. right. Might have to cut that part out. But anyway, <laughs> um, have to pretend we know everything at all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so lord don't slow me down i'm gonna say if we're just talking about that one song by itself i'm gonna say could be better but better okay. than don't stop just because stupid why Why would you you know it's perfect for liam exactly the same as the song full on we'll get to get to that in a minute i suppose but you've got the best singer in the world to sing that style of song use him you know it makes no yeah. sense it makes no yeah, sense 100 percent agree yeah <laughs> It always, I always hate that cut. Lila, why is that Lila? You know, and I interviewed Simon Halfon and I didn't mention the fact that I just think, why does that, especially the video, I think of the video for Lila so vibrant and all the colors and everything. Mm. Why is that the single for Lila anyway? It's not about because the artwork. All um, oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think Lila is a very good song, um, but. It's not one, it's never one that I, some people love it and people name their kids after it and things like that. Mm. I, um, I think it's good, but it's never been one that's really blown me away. Um, I think it's a bit stompy is my view of that, uh, of that era when Zach Starkey's there. Doo, 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 doo. I think it's a bit stompy, like force of nature, mucky fingers. It's all just a bit stompy. Yeah. So Lila, I think, is good, but it's never really blown me away that much. Um, so it would be somewhere in the high end of pretty good, probably, for me, just based on Lila. Yeah. I, I have a bit of an emotional attachment to this song because I was living in America at the time. All right. The music scene out there was, was a little bit alien. Uh, I was working in the music scene. I, I was there. Uh, really missing the the british scene and that came out and i went in th their big record store over there is best buy and i went out and bought it and th this was the first song i heard and it was just like 
it was like stepping back into a warm house with a roaring fire after being in the storm. Oh, I recognize this. This is familiar. So I've, I've always loved the song largely because of where I was in life when I heard it. Um, I think that, that thing of having a song where you just go bam, 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 bam. That was because of Snow Patrol um, ah, and, uh, and their influence. So you watch their guitar style, it's all downstrokes. It's just dum, 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 dum. They'll just wham, 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 like a, like a Duracell bunny, you know, do, 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 do. And um, that was the really big prevalent style at the time. So with Mucky Fingers, they do that, don't they? Just bang, 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 bang yeah. for like three minutes. Yeah. But no, I, I do love Lila, actually. I, I'm not able to be very um, detached and analytical about it because I, you know, it, it, it was a, it was a moment for me, but um Eyeball Tickler, uh, for me, that was like the first um, the first definite sign of where they were going with Dig Out Your Soul. It's a pretty good song, that one. Mm. And uh, Liam's singing it. It also reminded me of Liam's first album, um, his first solo album after BDI, this one. So Eyeball Tickler, I liked. Mm -hmm. Won't Let You Down was a bit Little James to me. Yeah. So not quite as strong. So yeah, I would say... Yeah, I, you know, I would say at the top are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I won't let you down and pass me down the wine. I sort of always put together as like these two Liam written songs that are just a bit average, you know, like you can imagine. And it, it's such a strange thing in Oasis that other bands don't really have that as much that, you know, go on, then you do one. And it's not really that great. You know what I mean? It's, it's just a weird situation. But I know some people really like Won't Let You Down and, and um, Pass Me Down the Wine. But to me, those two are just like Liam's attempt at songwriting when he wasn't really a great established songwriter at that point. And I don't probably think they should have been, you know, they shouldn't really have been used. I suppose that's what B-sides are for. But, you know, I, I just don't think they're that great. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, and I really like Eyeball Tickler. It's a, a really, you know, potent, quick, you know, we uh, there was a lot of slow and mid-paced Oasis songs around this time. And to have mm. that real, like, pelting burst of energy uh, was really good fun. The one thing, the one, the one good thing about this is all the B-sides are Liam. And post-2000, that's rare. All the, the, the lead track and the B-sides are all Liam, and that's rare for this yeah. period. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very much. Uh, right, okay, so what have we got next? Roll With It. Roll With It's an interesting one. Now, Roll With It gets a lot of, um, you know, like, interestingly, it wasn't on the, the Best of British Top 100, you know, when all pretty much every other uh, Oasis single from around that time was, and Roll mm. With It wasn't. I think it gets quite a bit of stick, but I think it's a great song, and people sort of forget, like, you know, it's, it's actually, there's quite melancholy elements to it and stuff. I think if you broke it down and, and played it on acoustic guitar... You know, it's, it's beautiful. It's a really great song. It's really brilliantly put together. And you ask anyone from an Oasis tribute band, you know, Roll With It is the one. You know, Roll With It is the song that gets people bouncing. Um, yeah. Similar to like, um, you know, go and see, I've seen the Smiths tribute band, the Smiths with an I a few times. And, you know, certain songs, I mean, you know, you, you go out and you, you play these sort of gigs, but there's certain songs that just get people going, whether it's the 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 rhythm or whatever it is and like mm. they did like what difference does it make and everyone was going nuts and they finished with how soon is now which is like the big song now i suppose people sort of tend to think of it but with that mid pace do, 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 and everyone's just sort of meandering and actually mm. what difference does it make that's the one that's really gets you bouncing so i think yeah. one roll with it while it's not the um it's not up there with don't look back in anger and cigarettes and alcohol i think it's such a joyous and brilliant piece of music um and we'll get onto the b-sides as but but i think it's i'd say it's better than go let it out mm, not quite as good as all around the world when it comes to songs you know the, the specifically just the lead single but what, what do you think about the b-sides yeah well it's better people i love that's 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 what I couldn't believe that was left off the master plan album, you know, Swamp oh. Song was on and that was left off, you know, ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love it's better people. Um, that was one of the biggest reasons you, you can't see it, but I bought that 12 string was to get that sound, you know, that, that they got on that song. Love it. It's better. People is an absolute tune. Now rocking chair. I know Noel has said that this is one of his favorite B sides from the era and that he would have preferred to have rocking chair 
as track two on Morning Glory instead of Roll With It. I personally think that would have been a huge mistake. Rockin' Chair is my least favourite B-side from this whole era. Um, oh, really? really? Yeah, it is, it's just too minor key for me. It doesn't have that um, that massive sort of hopeful side to it. It's just got the dark side, for, for me at least. And um, so I, I know I, I know I'm a bit out on my own on an mm. island there of all the other Oasis fans, but um, for just personal, I don't really think Rocking Chair is that strong. And then we've got Live Forever played exactly the same, just in front of the Glastonbury crowd. So yeah. Um, I'm with you on the song Roll With It. I think those are some of his best lyrics. That um, kiss the girl, she's not behind the door. You know, I think I recognise your face, but I've never seen you before. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing lyrics. Like that, that, those, those words like that just kind of twisted my teenage heart for, in a re for a reason I couldn't quite say why. You know, it didn't make me, you know, I wasn't thinking of any particular girl at the time, but it's just like, wow, that yeah. makes me feel something. And it just scans so beautifully as well. You know, he often, you know, it, it might not be you, you like Morrissey or Billy Bragg or whatever, but, but you know, you know, I think I recognise your face, but I've never seen you before, you know, and, yeah. and just the way that he'll often do that thing of like, you know, you know, up, when he's going up, he'll sing the word up, you know, he just knows how to do all these little tricks that are mm. like just so clever and so excellent. So, yeah, um. I, I don't agree on Rocky Chair. I mean, I, I know where you're coming from. It is one of their sort of darker moments. And it's very, you know, there isn't, like most of them songs might have a darkness to them. Like a, like a talk tonight, you know, there'll be a darkness to it. But then there is a hopefulness. That is just purely sad. But I just think it's incredible. And I think Liam's voice is so perfect. You know, when he's, the way he's so fractured singing it is just, I love yeah. it so much. But um, where did you have this one then? Well, I, as I know, I'm in the very small minority on rocking chair. You've probably got it right there. Yeah. Okay. I think it's definitely better than little by little. She is love. I'd, I'd put the song ahead, and I think with rocking chair and and it's better people. I think yeah. I think that's a yeah. fair spot for it. I think. Um, all right. There's the vibrant green of Shaker Maker. Um, this is a tough one because Shaker Maker. I know that it's sort of very special. It was Oasis second single so it means a lot to people that were there at the time buying the singles i wasn't i'd come in at cigarettes and alcohol a little bit later so you know i think it's super cool but as a song itself i don't think it holds up in the same way that a lot of the other songs do mm. um i so based on the song itself i'd probably put it i'd still put it but in little little by little she is love i wouldn't put it as good as go let it out as a song so i'd probably go there just based on the song itself mm. right well i i would say i would actually put it a little bit lower than that i would put it at the top of pretty good because um we've got for, on the b sides we've yeah so shaker maker it's the it's the sort of the the daft pop moment isn't it of a uh, of definitely maybe it hasn't got the depth of some of the other songs it's fun it's bluesy it's fun but um do you want to be a spaceman is very 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 folky i always thought that if they had had a chance to do a less lo-fi recording of that that would be fantastic and i love the song but i feel like on the recording the sound quality is just a bit shit um it's it's noel's playing fine but behind the desk i think there were there may have been corners cut i don't know um i think the the, the sound quality the song's great but the sound quality is shit um, I like the song Alive as well. I think that's a really interesting history piece, you know, listening to um, probably, the, I guess it's probably the most polished of their demos because it was the only one that made it on as a B-side. And I do like the song. So it's really interesting, but you have to sort of stack it up and say, is this as good as, you know, Street Fighting Man and the fame of flashbacks and all that? So we go, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's this one and Supersonic, they are, they're finding their feet and fair play, you know. Um, and then you've got Bring It On Down Live, which um, it's okay. But again, Tony's drumming is, it sounds it sounds a little bit weak on this live version as well. And it, they play it exactly the same as the record. So mm. for me, it's the top of Pretty Good or the bottom of Mad For It. Okay. So I think, so what have we got? We've got Little By Little She Is Love. 
um, but that's really got the boost from my generation, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. So I would, per I mean, I, I know what you mean about the sound quality. I'm not a massive sound quality guy. I'm, I'm quite, I'm much more about a song. And so I don't tend to hear that. You know, I know people like they're really into their vinyl or really into like remastered remix versions. I generally can't hear it. I'm just focused mm -hmm. on how does the song make me feel at this point? And um, do you want to be a spaceman? I absolutely love. And then Alive, I think is a, I know what you mean though, they're both, yeah, like they are demos, they are like, hmm. oh, we haven't really got time, you know, they were so busy at this point, weren't they, they were charging around the country, doing these tours everywhere, hmm. got to knock out another single, you can imagine, boys, we need another single, you know, from McGee, you know? <laughs> right, get another one out there, you know, what have we got, we got a live, all right, stick it on, oh, it's a shit version, no, it doesn't matter, chuck it on, you know, and yeah. so, so you can imagine they're sort of chucking them together, um, yeah, I, I but because of the strength of Do You Want to Be a Spaceman, I think I would probably just have it over. No, I keep it where it is, I think, above um, okay. Little by Little She Is Love. Although it does have my generation, but there you go. Oh, cool. this is a tough one. This might be the best four four track EP ever released, some might say. Some yep. might say. <laughs> is there an equal number one spot available? Oh, uh, well. Yeah. I mean, some might say if, we're, you know, my job here is to talk about the song itself. Um, mm. I, I've I've been on record as I don't tend to put it in my like top 10 Oasis songs and things. And I've, I've generally, my, my view has been it's a bit slow. It's a little bit ploddy. But uh, actually, there's then I'll just, it'll come on. And when it comes on, I always go, wow. You know, it always sort of knocks my head off as soon as it comes on, just the power and the swagger of it. So mm. I don't I don't necessarily always think that. I, I, there are times you just think, oh, and just the way it builds and the chorus is so huge. It's an incredible piece of music, similar to like, you know, Don't Look Back in Anger Levels. I would probably have it... Um, See, this is now where it's difficult with like live forever and stuff, isn't it? Um, I'd have it definitely in biblical. So I'm going to put it there right now um, because I know that we've got the B-side to talk about as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, good call on that. And with your comment about it dragging a little bit, this is the song that um, Owen Morris very speeded up more than any other ever. This has been sped up by over a, a semitone more than one guitar fret. So um, he must have done it before he got Liam and Noel's vocals because they'd sound like Donald Duck otherwise. Um, but he has yeah, he really sped this up. And when you slow it down and listen in the original speed so that you can play along without retuning your guitar, um, it sound he was right. And your, your sense there is actually bang on. It was very draggy before. For me now at the speed it's at, it, it, it doesn't feel draggy. It feels like a head bopper. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a song you nod along to, you know. Um, but to, I mean, talk tonight. That was another one that had that that thing when I was a teenager. You hear that song, you think, genius, yeah. genius. You learn it and you sing it to a girl, and magic. You know, mm. <laughs> it's um, that that is that is really a vulnerable, personal, honest song of his. It's great when you know the story about yeah. him storming out of the band. On they could never keep it together on tour in America, could they ever? <laughs> it was it always, always America. Just always quit and came home every time that's probably part of why they didn't fully crack it like they did everywhere else but yeah um talk tonight one of his best acquiesce amazing easily as good as the as the a side you know and uh, you know it's the first track on the master plan he's put it out on endless different demos as the lead track mm -hmm. when they played saturday night live in america they they, they were doing it in support of uh, be here now and they played don't go away and acquiesce <laughs> incredible yeah and head shrink is great the, the only thing with head shrinker again um and yeah like what you were saying before about the sound quality this is me being a music nerd so uh, this is coming it from a a, a full-time musician's perspective um again i don't like the way they recorded it it sounds so um it's it's great it's raw the song is great but um I, the tone on it winds me up. So <laughs> that's a little barrier for me. Um, but, but it's a very small barrier because the song's great. So for me, um, oh, yeah, I, okay. It, it, it's it's even pegged with cigarettes and alcohol. I don't know whether it would be above or, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really tough because I think, I think as a, 
as a song itself, I think some might say is a better song than Cigarettes and Alcohol. Um, but then Acquiesce, just boom, stri- you know, it just puts it ahead of it. Talk Tonight, boom. You know, and Head Shrinker, I really love Head Shrinker. And it is, it's similar to, you know, I, I love to have, you know, it's, it's, what, it's what Oasis is there for, for you, for me. And like, um, you know, to know that I've got Head Shrinker, that I can go to that as like, you know, what do I need now? I need Head Shrinker now. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the one I need right now. And so, yeah. yeah, I just think it's so special. And, you know, and Tony, Tony's playing and I think is great. And I think it's so lovely that, you know, that, that you, we get another, we get one final song with Tony before, before the Alan White era. Um, yeah. You know, and, you know, knowing Tony a little bit, it's like, I, I love that. You know, that means a lot mm. because, I, because of, you know, because knowing Tony, but, um, uh, yeah, so I, I think it's, I don't, yeah, I, I, it's so hard, isn't it? I think, I think that's probably the best part. I'm tempted to even put it above Don't Look Back in Anger just because of the, um, because of the strength of Acquiesce and Talk Tonight versus the, the Don't Look Back in Anger B-sides, but. I'm not sure if it can stand up to Don't Look Back in Anger personally, but. <laughs> Your call. All right, Your let's call. leave it there. Um, <laughs> Okay, what we got next? Songbird. Uh-huh. Songbird's um, an interesting one. Songbird's not one, as I say, I know Songbird, people love it, and you see quite a lot of acoustic versions of it coming up on online and things like this. And I think maybe, I just think it's a two chord song, you know, and I think it goes back to that thing of Liam as a songwriter at this point where he's still getting his head around it. He's not mm. a great songwriter yet. And I think, well, I don't want to hear someone's, you know, sort of getting their head around songwriting. I want to hear Noel Gallagher songwriting because he's, you know, if he was doing Songbird, there'd probably be another chorus or there'd be a, you know, there'd be another side to it. As it is, I think it's like a two, I think it's two chords. It might be more, but is it two chords? G G and E minus start to finish, yeah. Yeah, just two chords, you know, blasts along it's fine it, it, it would have been fine as a b-side i don't think it's it's that great a single to be honest um as a song itself i know there's a there's a <laughs> there's a better song on the b-side that we're going to talk about um but yeah as based on the song itself uh i'd be putting it um is it better than lila falling down i'd be uh, somewhere around this period this range here probably there i'd say or maybe just less than four somewhere around here is where yeah. i'd be having it right well i'm going to start off with track three here <laughs> uh, columbia live fucking hell the drum are out of time liam is out of tune noel is out of tune oh my life this is the worst oasis b-side ever this is worse than the prodigy remix this is the worse it's so bad <laughs> now i don't know why they put it in there but I, I i've only listened to it a couple of times because it's like uh it's like fingernails on the chalkboard to me now um the drums are out of time how anyway anyway <laughs> calming down um and so you know you said you, there's a there's a b-side you quite like i'm guessing that's you've got the heart of a star absolutely um, yeah so i i i didn't i find that one so depressing Really? I just, uh, yeah, I found for, for me that the heart and soul of Oasis is is hope, it's positivity, mm. and for for me that was I listened to that one and went oh oh I'll, I'll I'll endure this all the way through and and it felt like that it felt like a chore to finish that one so for me as well this was released um, as the last single wasn't it from yeah. um, from Chemistry so I'd heard it a million times I quite like Songbird. Um, just because I, I love the piano playing. I think that... that, do, 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 that do, do, yeah. Jay Darlington is that? Is that um, the Cooler Shaker guy? I don't know who plays on that, actually. I'd need to, I'd need to double check who plays the piano on it. Um, it's because I think I think Jay only played live on it, so I'll, I'll right. carry on talking and I'll have a look. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so for me, um, this was another one of those singles where I bought it and it made me really mad after I got home and listened to it because... It, it pissed me off. I knew Songbird already. I was buying it for the B-sides. Columbia was a disaster. And I didn't like You Got the Heart of the Star. So this one, unfortunately for me, was shite. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, just looked at, according to uh, according to the credits, it's it's Noel Gallagher. 
really? kid playing the piano. According to the credits, yeah, we've got Liam Gallagher vocals, acoustic guitar, hand claps, Noel acoustic guitar, piano, Gem acoustic guitar, harmonium, and Alan White tambourine. Good for him. There we go. Um, all right. Well, where was it? Where were we? I mean, like as I say, the the whole Columbia Live. I've probably, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of of Columbia, so I've probably you know, might have listened to that a few times in my life, but not much really. And then the, uh, as I say, You Got the Heart of a Star, I think is is beautiful. I, I get where you're coming from, but I think it's a lovely song. Come on, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> you know, I, that's, uh, I do like that a lot. Um, where is it? Where have we put it? There. Um, yeah. Is it? But see, I, I get what you mean, but I think at least we've got them. You know what I mean? At least we've got them, yeah. which is more than having not very much, having remixes and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, it was a visceral reaction to me. as a, <laughs> So I, I do, as a musician, out of time drums and out, out of tune singing to that extent wound me up really I badly. And so right. I, I get it. This is it. It is, it is me being a, <laughs> a, it's not a snobby musician is what it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, right. Stand by me. There's Brian Cannon Senior on the front. R.I.P. Just died this last week. Oh. Um, so Stand by Me is well. This is a well. I, I mean, obviously, we'll get onto the B sides, but as a song itself, I think it's um, a majestic song. It's a brilliant song. I think that the you know the the definitive version is by the Pool on the um, on that like right here right now documentary um mm. the be here now documentary that came out that's the one you know that's the one that really shows how great this song is um i think the recorded version's a bit lot it goes on a bit too long um i don't normally have an issue with that on on um most of the tracks on be here now i don't mind the fact they're like six minutes long but this one i do think it drags on a bit and it probably then um loses a bit of the momentum like if it had been three minutes then i think it would have had a you know would have felt a bit more special. Uh, I think it does sort of lose something from dragging on a bit, but I, th I still think it's a great song and it would be in somewhere in, in Mad For It for me. Um, I don't think it's good to roll with it. Is it as good to go let it out? Probably around there personally, just based on the main song, but then we can get to the B-sides and see what you've got to say. Interesting, so interesting. So for me, Stand By Me was my favorite song on Be Here Now. Um, I thought it was, I, I love it. And I love the video and it was the first one I learned to play. For me, this one is biblical second only to Don't Look Back in Anger. I actually, the, the B sides on this. Um, so I love, absolutely love Stand By Me. I got the fever, absolute tune. It, it's one of the ones I've done on my channel because no one had figured out the chords. Um, I wish they played it live. I think it's an absolutely fantastic tune. Yeah. Sister Lover, is, it's a bit wacky. It's kind of weird. Call, when you know he's talking about the Sister Lovers, the band mm. that helped them get signed, that got them to King Tut's on that night, and you kind of it makes a bit more sense. If you hadn't got the context of the song, you'd go, my Sister Lover? What? <laughs> um, but when, when you understand, the, uh, it's so famous now anyway, probably mm. any serious Oasis fan knows exactly what that's about on first look. Um, and Going Nowhere... I mean, oh. most of my friends bought the single for that song. It's just, it's the master plan of this era, isn't it? Yeah. And um, featuring, interestingly, only Nolan Allen of, of Oasis. But, I mean, the guitar on Going Nowhere. <laughs> and he's got a harmonising part with it as well. He's, he's done a, an 80s guitarist. He harmonises with himself. Um, this, for me, this is a, of this era a masterpiece ep if i if i ever put out an ep that i like as much as this one i i, I could i can retire do you know what i mean absolutely um, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm very very you know big on this particular one personally how do you feel about the as as the guitar player how do you feel about the one note guitar solo and i got the fever doesn't he just yeah do like... he that. wow 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 yeah. <laughs> It, I don't view it. <laughs> um, you do a breakdown on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he, okay, yeah, all right. He, he, he was shit in the, on on. I mean, the other the other one was um, it's getting better, man. I, I do find that irritating. Where he would it's getting better, man. Wow, 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 just going all the time. But then you listen to the live at air studios version, and it's far better. 
Yeah. One day, yeah. one day when I'm uh, when I'm famous, <laughs> I'm going to ask Noel if I can remix "Be Here Now" and stick that <laughs> Air Air Studios version in there. Um, no, it's um, the the it's not great lead guitar wise, but it's an amazing song, and yeah. Liam sings fantastically on it. And you know, you were saying earlier about how um, Noel needs to sing the right songs and Liam needs to sing the right songs. I feel mm. like they called it right here. And again, I I'm aware that this is me on a small island with the rest of the Oasis fans going, eh, we're well, not so sure. But um, I love this EP. I think this EP is brilliant. So for, for me, I would, I would bump it up significantly. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I think I, I know exactly what you mean. I think I got the fever is great and I love that. Um, as I saw on the breeze. Mm. Um, yeah, so I love that. Uh, and I love my sister lover as well. But I, I agree. It's not um, It's not like a, a top 10 tune for me, but it is great. But Going Nowhere mm. really, really is so special. I'm a big sort of Burt Bacharach guy as well. I interviewed mm. Nick Ingman, who, who did the horns and, and strings on it. Completely forgot he'd done it. It was only like later on he emailed me and said, oh, yeah, I did do that one, didn't I? Um, so, yeah, I think on the strength of um, going nowhere, particularly, I'm happy to stick it in a biblical because it was it is one that I would stick on as a four track EP. And the fact that the songs um, go into each other, don't they? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they meld together. Um, mm. uh, they fade in and fade out of each other, which is so it was crafted as an EP. Yeah, but I think. I don't think personally, I'm, I'm happy to move it ahead of these, but I don't think I can personally move it ahead of Live Forever and those sure. things in terms of what the, the four EPs or three, the, the, you know, the overall songs. That would be my preference to stick it there. Stop Crying Your Heart Out next. Um, once again, this is, I know some people have this as their, like one of their favourite top 10 songs and things like that. And maybe it's different now with people come into oasis later on but for me i thought this was them trying to do like a big epic song um mm. in the realms of master plan or, or don't like an anger or something and i just think it's a bit it, it doesn't grab me in the same way a lot of those other ones do so while i appreciate it for what it is and i think especially the way it's been used on things in the last few years like people point at being used on england football and stuff like that um and it is a very good song, but it's not in the, it's probably in the high end of pretty good or low end of mad for it for me as a song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got um, on the B sides, we've got uh, Thank You for the Good Times, which is you know, a, a rare in this era, Liam sung B side, which was, you know, it was it, because it was so refreshing to hear Liam singing a B side, it was, that was kind of, made me like it a bit more but the song itself it's a bit middle of the road really it's nothing very exciting and uh, you got shouted out loud which is um in this in this era the mandatory uh noel dirge <laughs> you know i don't know what the right word is very slow country sounding song um which was really nice um but it was just just another one that didn't feel finished you know he's singing quite big kind of get up and let's go lyrics to a really kind of acoustic -y song and there's so yeah, for me, it's this. This was somewhere in pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think um, what we're we saying, yeah, shout out loud. I think is nice, but it doesn't, you know, even compared to like a um, you've got the heart of a star. I prefer to shout it out loud. I think shout it out loud's a, a lovely one, but yeah, it doesn't grab me. Thank you for the good times. I do really like actually. I think it's yeah. you know. And I think Andy Bell, you know, it's a lovely message that Andy Bell's, you know, another plug for the pod. You know, Andy Bell told me on the episode that it was, you know, it was like really his message to Oasis, you know, what Oasis oh, meant right. to him. Um, you know, he'd been, I think he'd been going through a difficult time with the divorce and stuff. And then it was really, you know, his message to the guys that, you know, you've, you've been there for me. Um, so I think it means a, a bit more for me because of that. Um, no, probably more really interesting. Yeah. It's amazing how a bit of context like that can change what you think of the song. Yeah. <laughs> that, that immediately makes me like it a bit more, knowing what it's about. Yeah, it's it's incredible. There was, what was it, the, he, he talked about um, the nature of reality to me. And this is one I've not heard him talk about to anyone else. 
because uh, you know people don't tend to interview Andy Bell about the Oasis album tracks or B sides he wrote because it's, it's such a small part of his. You know, most people don't think about that part of his career, but mm. you know, and he was saying like the nature of reality because um, his family were very Christian, and then and he's written this song talking about you know like a, a much more sort of um, what was it agnostic kind of worldview. And he felt like he had to go and take it to his dad first to make sure his dad was, you know, just to give him a heads up. Look, dad, I'm, I've written this song, but, you you know, weird, eh? You know, I've just never even thought about the lyrics to that song. It's just, you know, yeah. it's just a decent tune on that, on on, yeah. on Don't Believe the Truth. But there you go. Um, we digress. So what we, we're talking about, Stop Crying Your Heart Out, weren't we? Because thank you for the good times I really like. So I would have it... Um, now, does the fact that Thank You for the Good Times is good fun, and I think the single would put it above there, but then the fact that, that that's got my generation on it. But I would probably go there. How do you feel about that? I'd go behind, but it's your call. <laughs> <laughs> because, of, because of my generation. But you like She Is, she is Love, though, don't you? That's the yeah, thing, that's I don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. let's put, let's put, it is one of these. All right. Um, what have we got next now? What is that's um Stop the Clocks EP, that one. Stop the Clocks EP. Okay. So yeah, stop so it, Go on. Yes, yeah, so it, it was just um it was just it was bundled bundled with um some of the uh Stop the Clocks as a special. It it kind of doesn't count, but the, the, the interesting thing on it was it had a live version of some might say from 1995, yeah. uh, venue unknown. So that really that was all. It's just acquiesce the cigarettes and alcohol demo, and um, some might got say, you. and the master plan. Got you, got you. Okay, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Because what you know, like um, you know, we've the only thing. So the cigs and alcohol demos fine. Um, the some might say live version is you know is good, but it's yeah. a tough one really because it, it wasn't anything new. It was just a nice little curio to get if you could get hold of it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah um so probably in a could be better sort of thing is because it wasn't like they gave us anything extra yeah i agree i agree yeah um and um yeah and we didn't get the song stop the clocks <laughs> you know, that, no. that ended up coming out on noel's first album when you're like yeah. oh okay you call it stop the clocks they've talked about this song stop the clocks it's going to be the biggest best song ever and then they didn't give it to us and they noel put it out and it was a bit like oh all right yeah. um, it's very telling, isn't it, that, that all the bonus tracks were all 90s output. Yeah, very much. Yeah, very much. Mm. All right, what's that? Sunday Morning Call. Yes. Yeah, interesting one. Um, standing on Shoulder of Giants. Um, quite a sad song. It's quite a weird production. I'd be interested to hear what you say about the production, actually, because it's got that weird, like, keyboard on vocal, on choral setting. Oh, mm. oh. <laughs> or, which is which is very annoying to me and i'd, I'd probably yeah. never choose to put on sunday morning call to be honest so me to me it's probably just based on sunday morning call it's going to be in the lower end of pretty good or the top end of could be better personally yeah well um yeah sunday morning call was funny um it, they, they i think they were attempting to to start a phase two of their sound in the Beatles, the way the Beatles did. The first half of the Beatles was rock and roll, and then they kind of went psychedelic, didn't they? To, mm. in the second half, Peppers and all that. Um, I had friends who absolutely loved this song. They thought it was the best one on the album. Wow. Um, for me, I never really quite got it. It didn't, it just, it, it kind of said, I to the shops go. It didn't say I go to the shop. It wasn't, finished Do you know what i'm saying it wasn't a sentence in the right order yet it was a bit jumbled um carry us all i thought was a really strong b-side I, I actually really liked that b-side most of the b-sides from the shoulders of the giants era i thought were pretty strong actually they were just maybe a bit more clean than i would have liked they were a bit more i didn't want them as dirty as head shrinker but i didn't want them as sort of crisp and clean and refined as they were um Carry Us All was a kind of a quite a good anti-religion song, I thought. Mm. Um, it just needed bonehead, didn't it? It just needed bonehead. <laughs> Stand up there, you know, bar chords and just put some aggression into it. Um, 
Yeah, and I agree with what you said that Liam could have sung full on. Yeah, definitely. And like the fact it's called full on, and you don't get the singer that is full on. You know, yeah. like if you've got a song that's called full on, it's like, oh, this is full on, great. Oh, okay. Well, the sound of it is full on, but it's it's got no shouting, and no, I think is a good shouter, but he's not got the growl of a Liam. You know, so I think it's a good it's a good song, but. It will always be same as Lord Slow Me, Lord Don't Slow Me Down. It will always have that asterisk of well, why is Liam not singing it, you know? And yeah, uh, yeah I agree. Carry Us All I do really like. It was one of those songs that was on the uh, the Giants demos bootleg that, you know, I got before uh, or, or around the time the album came out. So I was mm. ready for that um, to be amazing. And so when it was on the B-side here and it was OK, the production and, and stuff, I was thinking, oh, because to me, that was like, you know, listen to that Giants demos, like Revolution Song and, and um, Carry Us All and, and all these songs that were like, they ended up being B-sides or, or Noel songs. It was like, this could be the best album ever. These songs are incredible. And they just yeah. didn't quite, you know, get the, the production on them or maybe they were all a little bit mid-paced or, or whatever. But, you know, the, the, the core of the songs available at that time was just remarkable. Mm. Um, and Carry Us All was definitely one of them. Um, I think my biggest beef with this though, is it's all Noel. Every song is Noel. There's no Liam on the CD. And whenever you got a single, uh, an Oasis single, where L Noel sings the lead and then sings all the B-sides, you go, oh, mm. yeah, where's Liam? <laughs> is he where's Liam? In? What's going on? But, so yeah, so for me, it's, it's not a super strong one really for me. Mm. now is it better than like i'm at a time let there be love falling down these ones that have got um because it, it did have full on in it it does have carry us all in it which is a good song and those don't even have extra songs but then the, the lead song isn't as good so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it there it could be better i think unless you're gonna argue vehemently <laughs> no i i mean no I, I think that's cool that's cool fair enough all right, from the from from the the standing on the shoulder era all the way back to the start, first single proper in Supersonic, and what a what an incredible kind of first four song introduction to the band this was. Mm. Um, like I, I obviously I didn't I came to it later, but I remember uh, like talking to people at the time that did, and you know if you imagine you've heard Supersonic on the radio. And you're like, okay, well, this band Oasis are cool. I'll go and buy this single. And then you put on that song. Yeah, that was great. And then it's like, Take Me Away comes on. You're like, what mm. the hell is this? You know, it's like a completely different band, different yeah. singer. Where's that come from? You know, and then you have, um, what else have we got on it? We've got um, I Will Believe, which is then like a completely different band again. That's like a, a m m much more of sort of a, baggy kind of dancier sort of sound to it as it pelts mm. along and then um yeah and then we've got what um is it columbia the fourth track on there yeah it's um, the white label the white label columbia which obviously i'm not a massive fan of columbia but but i know people absolutely love it and so it's like wow you know these four completely different while they're in that that general mold and one acoustic three electric but still such a, mm. an incredible mix of songs there really and supersonic as as a as a song itself such an incredible kind of swaggering but not just the swagger that like shaker maker's got some swagger this is a special song as well the chorus in terms of a structured song it's like wow that's you know this is an incredibly structured song as well hmm. well i mean supersonic yeah as you say supersonic is absolutely hellish it's a brilliant tune Take me away. I, I find this one really interesting because I felt like after 2000, Noel, he, I've said it several times, some of his um, acoustic B-sides sounded a bit country. And this one, when you listen to it, finger picking and slide guitar and him singing very softly, it, it, it's a kind of, um, it's almost like he's always had a little side of him that leans just a bit towards folk, a little mm. like, you know, and that's okay, you know. Um, I think this single has got better with age with, with with the four tracks because now it's fascinating to hear the Noel that we know 
way back then just singing acoustically that's interesting and um i will believe live that's uh, again when i when when i first got this single i got it after it had been out for a little while because i kind of got into oasis at the end of definitely maybe um but the um when i heard i will believe i was like yeah that's okay when i listen to it now i'm like that is really fascinating as a kind of a a history piece a historical item mm. just like a live the eight track version exactly it's yeah. so interesting to hear the band what they sounded like you know when they were out gigging and just trying to drum up a following i, I think that's amazing so for me it's uh, i mean the color i'm with you on columbia it's another sort of song for nothing isn't it it's not as good as the album version um and it's you know it's just it's sort of it's a bit of a throwaway it's a bit like a live song that is already on the album so for me um this single maybe uh, i've maybe put this in mad for it between uh roll with it and go let it out somewhere there i was thinking exactly that actually that was exactly where i was thinking around about that roll with it yeah. range because yeah i don't think that like it's better people is so good you know like things like mm. that it's like oh there's you know when we're comparing a, a set of four versus three you know it, yeah. it's so hard to to compare it but uh, yeah i think that's a fair place um Ooh. hindu times another one that was like uh, so exciting because it's a new song it's a new oasis song mm. and it's a new set of oasis songs so that was always a special thing um hindu times itself i think is like is as a i it is a bit oasis by numbers you know in the well and it's also like stereophonics because they completely rip <laughs> nick the riff <laughs> uh, from the same size feet um but yeah, but I, I think it's great. You know, it's got a real like um, power to it and a swagger to it. And it was just exciting to have them back, you know, in 2002. Mm. Yes, they're back and they're great. You know, and this is a really good song. The mm. video in black and white, Liam looks super cool. And it was just like, yeah, Oasis are back. You know, what did you think? Yeah, great song. I bought it. I was I was on tour in Northern Ireland in Belfast when this came out. And uh, so I'm, that's another timepiece for me, this this. Uh, this song so um i love i love the lead single um just getting older again i felt like that was a bit of a dirge not a huge fan of that song um idler's dream is really cool do you know what slightly spoiled it for me was when uh, adele came out with someone like you because it's almost the same piano part <laughs> all right yeah okay i've not thought very, of that before very, yeah yeah very similar piano part to that so when i listen to it now it's like oh it sounds like adele but um yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. For me, it's pretty good. I mean, it, at the top end of pretty good, probably. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't have that that my generation sort of, uh, you know, special source um, to yeah. really give it that extra little kick. Uh, yeah. Just getting older, same again. One of those Giants demos. <clears throat> you know, it's another one that I had on that Giants demo CD. And then it then it finally came out, and you're like, oh, just getting older. Oh, oh, okay, you know, mm. oh, good. It wasn't quite as, you know, when you've heard it as demo, you think, oh, this is going to be a special one, and it wasn't really. It was just fine. And then yeah, Idler's Dream, I, I do really like, and I know that a lot of people have that as like a, a sort of a top ten Oasis song and stuff. I, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily. I would have it. Uh, it's it's it's. I, th I think it's really nice, but yeah, not yeah. quite in that level. So I think definitely in the pretty good um yeah i think in the top end of pretty good ahead of lila similar to lila but just about ahead of it maybe uh yeah, yeah perfect yeah wicked. Well, well we got another debut first track off an album we got the shock of the lightning shock of the lightning was a real like you know and once again when the lyrics sum up the um sum up the 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 sound of the, the song as well it is like a pow you know it really gets you like mm. bang here we go what have we got here and um yeah i so i really really like this one um i just like upbeat oasis you know i, I love upbeat oasis you know with that when they really go for it um yeah. so yeah so for the song itself i think is definitely in at the top end of pretty good it's probably similar actually to the to the like hindu times maybe just ahead of the hindu times is it mad for it? Is it really as good as that? I think that the the actual song itself, I'd be putting in this sort of region, um, maybe not quite up at 
this sort of level, but I'd say around here, probably yeah. around there. And then do you want to let, let's talk about the B sides and let's see the, where that might move it to. Oh well, yeah, uh, uh, another one. Um, yeah, so "Shock of the Lightning" is epic. It's a great song. It's really I love the harmonies, the chords, the way it's structured. I love the the drums. I love the way they've got that bass drum so loud. You know, uh, the "Shock of the Shock of the Lightning" is amazing. There are no B sides. There is a remix by the Chemical Brothers of "Falling Down." So you're not getting any b-sides there's no package you're getting a, a remix of falling down that's nowhere near as good as the actual version of falling down and so whew, that's annoying to me to a to, to a to a diehard oasis fan that's annoying so for me i would not be putting it in mad for it personally uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe i would if it was me i'd be putting it below falling down because there's no b-side yeah but it's a better song than falling down so i, I don't know some as a package that's the irritating thing is the the lack of yeah no i thing. agree i think i think having swollen hand blues on there i think they're two similar songs actually i think falling down might be a better song but then shocker lightning's got that more power to it so yeah i think about mm -hmm. there's sort of probably about right isn't it yeah. uh here we go <laughs> um whatever wow this Amazing. is going to be another one that's going to be challenging the top end isn't it yes um yeah now i mean we'll get onto the b-sides and there's an interesting discussion to be had about one of the b-sides in particular um whatever i think is definitely in biblical uh the song itself i think is is amazing probably the song itself if we're just talking about the song itself i'd probably say that i think it's a better song than stand by me but probably not as good as as um live forever um but then, yeah, what do you think of whatever? And then also, yeah, that then when we get into the B-sides here, it's going to be a different different discussion, I think. Well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, actually, you've put it exactly where I would have put it straight off. So um, the song Whatever, I love, absolutely love. Um, Half the World Away, I love it. It's good to be free. I love it. But track four is Slide Away. Mm -hmm. So it's a song for nothing. It's a, you know, it's a, you know, it's a live forever live at glastonbury it's just the same song this one is literally just lifted off the album bang it's just a fourth song that we've already heard so mm. that's the only black mark on it is it's only really three songs um but tracks one two and three i absolutely love all of them especially the end of it's good to be free with boneheads um hurry, 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 and all that silly mm -hmm. stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> um I'll be honest, I, for, for the first three tracks, I haven't got a single bad word to say about any of them. Mm. I mean, you mentioned an interesting discussion, so I'm curious to know what you think. But I, I, all of them, for me, are solid gold, really. Yeah, well, it's slide away. I mean, obviously, like oh. what, what we what we talk about, you know, whatever I think is a, is a great song. Um, it's good to be free is so special and so interesting mm. and strange and dark and weird. And the lyrics are great. Liam's yeah. vocals great. Half the world away is just a magical, beautiful song. It's obviously, you know, be be become something else now with the Raw family and with cover versions and everything else. Mm. Um, Noel playing it live, you know, every time now. It's become like a, it's become like a classic now, isn't it? Um, yeah. Whereas Slide Away, I think, is the really interesting one here because yeah, I completely agree. It was a song for nothing, um, and it's like, oh, it's a shame because I've already got it. But it's still one of the best songs ever recorded by anyone ever. <laughs> and yeah. and I think it is for a lot of people, it's like, you know, um, people like me who might have been, I mean, it was, a, I had heard the stuff by the time whatever came out. But imagine all those people that hadn't really got Definitely Maybe. And then it was like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that band Oasis. They're supposed to be good. And then they hear whatever on the radio, like, wow, OK. And they go out and buy the single. And then they're like, ah, oh, that song is from the album. And then they go, bloody hell, that song's great. I best go and buy the album, you know, if the, if the yeah. other 11 or anything like that one. So yeah. so I kind of get it as as the sort of the gateway between Definitely Maybe and what was to come with Morning Glory. It's like they're kind of looking forward um, with, with uh, whatever and uh, half the world away and they're kind of looking backwards but it's good to be free and slide away is the way i kind of huh. see it so very deceptive huh i do come out with them occasionally mate um, <laughs> so, never occurred to me. that's cool yeah so that's the way i kind of thought about it um and and as i say when you talk about four songs 
then when you do put slide away in there it's like well it, it then if you're talking about four songs you take it out of the context of getting something new if for mm. people that had the album then it does shift into the top because slide away is one of the best songs so it does but i think um yeah it's all right now i mean we're all of them these are all so close but I'm, i mean i'm comfortable with it being there if you're happy with it yeah. being there yeah bang on yeah. perfect all right who have we got there is that who feels love it is yeah that's who feels love um once again another one that's sort of in that kind of you know um psychedelic -y era then that's the sort of the sound they're going for which was never my kind of favorite i i do enjoy it but it's not as i say it's not one of my favorite oasis songs like i tend to to go for the really you know really emotional or really upfront and joyous or powerful you know that's and so these sort of meandery kind of cool ones don't really do it for me as much um so i'd have it probably in the you know in that sort of pretty good sort of range to be honest i don't think mm. i'd quite sneak into mad for it um so yeah, yeah it'd probably be around there for me what, what do you think yeah i mean for me this one would be at the top of pretty good um because i i quite like who feels love even though he nicked it off govinda by uh cool shaker <laughs> it, it's tabla sitar one chord and they came out first <laughs> he just nicked it and changed the chord and slowed it down a bit um I, but i do love the song and i love the really interesting harmonies over it one way road is that that's is that the one that um well i covered yeah Weller loves it yeah Weller absolutely yeah. loves it it's one of his favorite it's, it's songs a good song that one really mm. good song and, and i love helter skelter as well i mean mm. Again, we've got we're very um, sort of uh, Noel heavy, but mm. I, th I think this is a really actually strong single. Strong. It's only three songs. It's not four. Mm. Um, it, I mean, do you know what I, I do? I think it's I think it's better than the "Stop Crying Your Heart Out" single, but I'll go with you on. I'll go with what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I who feels love is a song. Um probably similar actually as a as a lead track to to these sort of ones one way road i think is really good so once again same thing i have the same issue with all these giants demos really excited to hear it disappointed when it came out so every right. giants demos I, I have that issue with and then yeah. helter skelter that was a disappointment for me because i, I love the beatles um, original and i yeah. just think they've was the what was the point you know they've taken this song that is like similar to talking about full on helter skelter is supposed to be insane you know the beatles it's yeah. like <laughs> mad it's so like gah, 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 all this sort of distortion it's crazy and Running paul's around, doing is like yeah. oh you know whereas noel's just like you know helter skelter helter skelter so i was mm. like oh okay you've taken like the most insane oasis song and just made it kind of pretty average so right. um yeah so I'd, I'd probably sit in pretty good on that one. Yep, fine, fine. Cool, almost there, mate. Um, little song called Wonderwall. Um, <laughs> now, now Wonderwall. Now the Wonderwall CD that I've got, although actually I think I've given it away as a Patreon gift to someone, so I don't think I've got any more. But but the Wonderwall single I had was like the Japanese version that had mm. uh, a couple of extra tracks on it as well, but. The Wonderwall, I mean, Wonderwall itself as a, as a song, I mean, I was just editing um, uh, Name Drop Time. I was ed editing my interview with Alan McGee, where we talked through our top 20 creation records that people voted for top 20 creation records. It's on Barrel House Radio. And, um, and McGee said, and I said to him, like, did you think, like, uh, after Definitely Maybe, you know how did you feel when they came in with these different sounding songs you know because some people thought like oh oasis have blown it you know they've they've sort of lost what made them so special and exciting yeah they made it didn't they yeah and uh and then when and he said the first one i heard was wonderwall and i was like that's going to be massive you know that's going to be massive and and he knew it you know he spotted it straight away but for me like wonderwall is 
is a very very special song obviously i've heard it far too much and it was that <laughs> putting it on then though editing into that show i was like that's a bloody good song you know you can't get away from the fact it's amazing but yeah. it's just i've just heard it too much so it's hard to it is hard to kind of take it out of that context now um so yeah as a song itself it would be in probably the probably around there above stand by me below whatever personally but then then we're going to get onto the b-sides <laughs> yeah so i mean swamp song i'll start with swamp song it's a bit of a laugh isn't it it's cool yeah. they've got the the drums are from glastonbury and the crowd noise is from glastonbury and everything else is studio um they they got the the bass parts down i think noel did bass on this um and they've got weller playing as well and boneheads yeah. and that um, and so, it, I mean, it's, it's great fun. You can almost hear it in a Guy Ritchie movie sort of backing mm -hmm. track somewhere, can't you? But um, so the Swamp Song's the weakest B-side, but it's still a good laugh. It's just spirit in the sky with harmonica and solo, really. Um, but Round Our Way, amazing. The horn section, that that is still one of my favourites. I listen to that all the, all the time. Mm -hmm. I would love to write a song as good as that. And it, it's got that down-to-earth, gritty, working-class reality, you know, you know jumpers for goals football in the park mm. you know all that stuff it's just it, it, that is an amazing tune and the master plan which you know is probably the best oasis song they ever did um so i mean for me as soon as you factor in round our way and the master plan swamp song is still actually great as well mm. for me this hat wonderwall bounces up to just being under um uh some might say at this point that that's my feeling just because the master plan you know yeah you can't argue with that can you i mean some might say versus wonderwall i'd probably favor some might say and then you've got mm. like acquiesce versus round our way oh my god like how do you how do you pick versus those two songs versus each other yeah. and then you've got like the master plan versus say talk tonight um Oh God! And then you've got a swamp song in there as well, chucked in. Say swamp song versus head shrinko is. Well, I suppose that's the the head to head you do. So yeah, it's all it's right up there, isn't it? And, and yeah. here's the mad thing: look look at them top three. They were they were almost consecutive. You know, mm. some might say you had you also had them roll with it, which was you know massive because of the battle of Britpop. And then you had you know Wonderwall and Don't Look Back in Anger. They were they were almost consecutive. Incredible. it's just no wonder they took over you know yeah absolutely all right and then we've got so so yeah, i'm happy with it there so then finally we have got the importance of being idle which is um you know very interesting i mean i i it's similar i i think of it like um i don't tend to think of it as an oasis song to be honest i tend to more think of it as like this is a noel gallagher solo project but he just did it when he was still in oasis you see what i mean i it's very much yeah. feels very different. They didn't really ever do anything else like this before that. Dun, da, 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 dun, 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 da, da, da. You know, it's almost like a something from a film, something he did for a film soundtrack. You know, it, yeah. it's it's a it's a very unusual song. But I think it's a great song. Like the the um falsetto vocals throughout it, you know, and like we're saying about the way he the way his lyrics sort of scan so well. As long as there's a bed between the stars that shine, I don't mind. You know, it's it's such a the way that the lyrics, you know, give me a minute. It's yeah. just it's a vaudeville, you know, this is such a strange song. Um, but yeah. I think it's excellent. Um as it a as kooky. a sorry? It is kooky. Yeah. It's very kooky and very but very interesting and different and funny. So for based on that, I'd have it. Uh, probably ahead of Shaker Maker, not maybe yeah, probably similar around there based on the um, based on the song itself. Um, yeah. So what do you think? And then and then uh, B sides wise, yeah. Um, the 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 importance of being idle itself, I think, is fantastic. It's just from a musician's point of view, it was so refreshing to hear Noel doing some mad stuff he'd never done before that really worked. Um, so. I, I think even though it was kooky, it had a bit of a, a bit of a kind of abandoned fairground vibe to it slightly. Um, it's still an absolutely top quality song. I love it. It's a great one to play on the guitar as well. Pass me down the wine and the quiet ones. Both of them, I just I listen to them and go, yeah, they're okay. Mm. 
I mean, you, meant, you mentioned them uh, earlier on, especially passing me down the wine. You listen to them and you go, yeah, yeah. So for, for me, I mean, the song itself, Importance of Being Idle, is great. B-sides are like, eh. So the, the whole thing for me, it's fairly just kind of bang in the middle somewhere, you know, so. Yeah, I think it does move down because of the, because the B-sides. Yeah, I think Pass Me Down the Wine is a bad song. Like, I, <laughs> I don't think it's a well-written song. <laughs> You know, if you, yeah. you know, it's like if imagine it, like your mate came to you with that. So, or, or like, you know, you, oh, I've written a song or like younger brother or what, you know, kid. It'd just be like, OK, yeah, all right. Well, let's work on it. You know, you wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. You, you wouldn't say, oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> go and give that to the biggest band in the country and they'll put out. A, <laughs> you know, no, it just wouldn't happen. And then, yeah. and then the quiet one, similar. I think it's fine. Like I don't think it's it's a great song. It's two minutes long. You know, it's a Gem Archer yeah. tune, which I think is fine. Um, I'd say it's nice that we've got a, a couple of Liam vocals on there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't think they're that great at all. So yeah, I think it's a tricky one. Then we've got like a a, a very good song um, as a lead track and a couple of slightly duff B sides. So it's quite hard to quite hard to yeah. place it um, it is i mean it's with with which i would say i'll put just behind shaker maker really personally yeah ahead of stop crying your heart out uh yeah i think that's fair enough i think it's fair enough the, the lead track has got to be a defining element hasn't it hmm. so i think we're all right aren't we yeah that was fun <laughs> so i think it's come out slightly different to where you were so we didn't end up with anything in shy ultimately <laughs> no you you saved the, all the shite votes with your so your what fine... did you have in shite I had, um, well, as we talked about it and you've given me some context, sometimes I've changed my mind, but the, it, when I went through them today, uh, song, the Songbird CD, not the song Songbird, but the Songbird CD was shite because Columbia and you got the Harp Star. Um, Let There Be Love because sitting in here in silence of my, on my own with the ripoff of Sexy Sadie yeah, and yeah. the dreadful version of um, Rock and Roll Star. And I had... Um, uh, shock of the lightning and i'm out of town and i'm out of time because i was just so annoyed at the mm. lack of any b-sides got you got you fair enough fair enough and then what did you have on your original before we did it what did you have as like your your sort of top three or four then um well uh for me i i know this is me being sort of out on my own but it was as it was but um stand by me was second okay yeah i get it I get it. I, I, yeah, yeah, I can understand it. I just think those, yeah, it probably is a little bit your specific to you. Whereas I think that, yeah, yeah. some of those, I, I do really like that CD. As I say, I, I love the way that the, the tracks meld into each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a special one, isn't it? I think, I cool. think the, big, the big thing with it is people overlook it because of its Be Here Now era. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't quite have the massive kudos of the of the first single and all the all the cultural stuff that was with that. But um, I think if you take it on its own merits, I think it's an excellent EP. Mm, amazing. Brilliant. All right, James. Well, thank you so much for your time this evening, mate. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And so where can the kids find you online? It's uh, James Hargreaves Guitar on YouTube. I am also on Twitter, but I'm crap at it. So <laughs> YouTube's the best place. <laughs> Yes, go and check them out on YouTube. And uh, yeah, and we'll, uh, yeah, so thank you very much. And we'll see you again very soon. My pleasure, mate. See you next time.